Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. We're going live today on Father's Day. So happy Father's Day everybody. We are doing beautiful flamingos for Father's Day. So that's pretty exciting. All right, so let me show you the model here first. So here's our beautiful flamingo. All right, so this is from a painting that we have done several times at a live show that is actually like in studio. Uh, but today we're going live on Facebook for it. And then let me show you the template. We've got it all traced out. So here is our beautiful little flamingo that we traced. We do have other shapes too that go with it, like a little cute rose here that helps out quite a bit. And then I just use a Sharpie to do this, but if you're um, a little bit hesitant about that, you can always use a pencil first. That way they'll give you more confidence. And then when you've got a nice firm line that you're happy with around the shape that you want, then you can go ahead and firm that up with a Sharpie. And then I would recommend uh, doing your roses and things that are out in the foreground there with the pencil too. And then that way you can kind of, you know, definitely play with that, make sure you're comfortable with it. So we've got all that set up. And let's talk about our tools that we've got to start with here. I've got everything that we need. We also have a wonderful little kit that we can mail to you, tipsyartist.com. We have all these kits. You just pick out the painting you want, we send everything to you. So we have the brushes. And then we've got your paint. So there's a whole bunch of beautiful paint to choose from. And then comes with the canvas too. So it's all there. And then the templates. Yay, so that makes it super fun and easy. All right, so to get started, we're gonna go ahead and start with our background first, and I want the biggest brush that I've got, so I'm gonna start with my mama brush here, and then I am going to go ahead and mix up some turquoise. Now, if you are using our kit at home, then I would recommend using your Viridian and also your Cyan Blue, and then the Titanium White to go ahead and get this first mix here. Um, or it's just a real basic cobalt blue, emerald green, and white. Those are also some really basic colors that a lot of people do have. And we do about three equal parts of that. So an equal part of the white, and then the blue, and then the green. Hello, Audrey. Welcome. <laughs> and I'm going to mix all these colors together, and this will give me a really beautiful turquoise color. So again, this is about three equal parts, blue, green, and white. I also like to keep a lot of white nearby so that I can keep pushing into that mix. I like to keep the background really light and bright on this one. I almost push it to more of like a sea foam color, sea foam green. So I've got my turquoise base here, then I've got a lot of white nearby, and then I'm gonna be really textural with the background. So I go ahead and turn that brush over to the side and I do a little crisscross action here where I just cross the brush just back and forth. And then I've got my white nearby, so I'm gonna go ahead and push that white into the mix. And just keep pushing that back and forth. And then I just keep alternating between those two colors there. So you can have some areas that are a little bit darker than others. Or you can come in with a lot more of that white and then that will, of course, make it also much more opaque over the surface. But lots of fun texture here. Then when you want to do your cut-in work, you want to change how you hold the brush. I go for more of that medium shade that we mixed up. And then I turn it over to this side where I use the line edge. So I hold it more like a pencil. And then I just go ahead and do all my cut-in work around those line edges. So I'll take this all the way around. And if you run into an area where it's really pretty small, we definitely have that coming up around these little parts in here, then you can always switch over to a smaller brush. That'll just really help it, help it be a lot easier on you. So I've got Little Buddy or Little Bit, both really great options. Really tiny little turns. We're gonna use our Little Bit brush for that. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my Little Buddy here. So Little Buddy has a little flat edge to it so it can get some pretty nice coverage in smaller areas, but it's also tiny enough to really work in and around those small areas too. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this around the shapes of the roses. All the way around here. And 
um, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get all this little tiny work done. Like when in Rome, when I have the brush, and then I'll switch gears over to a bigger brush and go ahead and work into these other areas. So this is kind of a small little area in here. Again, turquoise and a lot of white. Just working all the way around these shapes here. And then I'll come back in with a larger brush. Let's see. I'm actually going to use my big daddy just to help me save a little bit of time and work into a much larger area. But this is a pretty big wide area here so I can really use a pretty big brush for all this. So I'm going to sweep it on back and forth into this large area and then I want to make sure I come back with that really fun textural look. So I'll work back and forth with that white and then more of that turquoise too. But again, a lot of that white will really help push this to almost a light kind of a sea foam color. Almost looks very minty. And just keep working this in. Turquoise to white. And remember to keep that crisscross just back and forth. Kind of looks like you make the letter X over and over again. I don't know if I have any fathers out there watching, but kind of wondering what all the fathers are doing today. Most of them are eating a good meal. <laughs> so I know around here they went, they've already done a round of Frisbee golf this morning. So of course a lot of people probably at church too. I guess we're a bunch of heathens around here. <laughs> we did have, well, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. We did have the cowboy church in here. They rent out our space on Sundays. So we get a little bit church that way. We, we do go to church sometimes. <laughs> so yes, we have the cowboy church in here. And then we do have a church here in Guthrie that we go to. But well, we slept in and then the boys went and played frisbee golf. So. And then I suppose they will have a, I know eating will be in order here pretty quick, probably hot dogs on the grill, so. But it is a really beautiful day. All right, we are almost done here with our background. All right, so if you want to, you can leave it just the way it is, or if you want to sweep in a little bit more white, just kind of make it a little bit more textural back there, you certainly can. So what I did here was I just picked up just pure white while the paint's still wet, and then I just very lightly with a gentle hand kind of sweep that on and just push it on with just a crisscross motion that goes back and forth. Just back and forth. All right, so I'm really loving the background now. I'm going to go ahead and let that set up just the way it is. We'll give that some dry time. Now we'll go ahead and work into the pink flamingo here. All right, so here we go. I will use my mama brush. I need to get a different, got another plate loaded up here with the colors that we need. So pink is a really nice mix of just very easy on this one this is just red and white so red and white if you have our paint kit at home we also have this really beautiful 
uh, primary magenta color, so just that with some white is also really lovely too. That's a nice mix. And then a lot of people have just red and white too. So real simple mix on the pink, just a lot of white with red, white and red. So just equal parts. You want to go really light, keep. So start with about equal parts on your mix and then you can kind of adjust as needed. So the more red you have, it's more hot pink. And then the more white you have, the more it is a light pink, like a light baby pink. And we're kind of wanting to go for more of that really light baby pink color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and position this into my flamingo. Just sweeping strokes here into the shape. And then as I do my cut and work around the edge, I wanna go ahead and take that brush and just do the line edge all the way around. So get that line work done all the way around. And basically just letting that long line of the end of the brush really work for me. So this is a long section, so I can definitely use that bigger brush to work into those areas. And then as it does get a little bit smaller, then I will have to switch. And I can do a little bit of overpainting here. I, that Sharpie will just bleed right through, and then I'll be able to cover that up later with a darker color that will come in over the top. So I'll sweep in all this light pink. Again, just lots of white, a little bit of red. Let's do a little bit more mixing to get more of that. I can be a little bit sloppy with this cut and work as again, that Sharpie will just bleed through. And I know that all the colors that I'm going to be using are going to easily cover over that. So I'm not concerned about that. This pink is super light. So I'm in good shape there. All right, and then I want to go ahead and I'll use my mama for just a little bit longer, but I will have to switch over to a smaller brush in here. It's going to get pretty tight on me here in just a moment. This is a really small area. So I'll work for as long as I can. And I'm just about done. Okay, so let's go ahead and put mama in the bath here. And then let me switch over to little buddy. All right, so Little Buddy is a nice size for this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the line edge of the brush to continue doing some of this cut and work in a smaller area. And then I'm still just going to work in this light pink into this small area here. Same color. And then just come around that little area there and then just fill this in. Do a light little feathering out here just to have it blend into the rest of that surface. You have to work on the feathering a little bit more with a smaller brush just because those, when it is a smaller size, it will definitely cut in and usually make smaller uh, brush strokes in there that are a bit more visible. So you want to hold it more over to the side parallel to the canvas and then really just lightly feather that out. All right, so that's looking really beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and just let that be. Then we'll come in with a little bit of some light gray. All right, so this is going to be pretty. I'm going to just use white and black. All right, I do wanna make sure that I've got just, the brush is clean, but it's just moist. There's no excess water in the brush. Come back in with a lot of white here. Tiny, tiny amount of black, just barely touch into the black. Let's see how tiny that is. I barely use any at all. This is a really light, light gray. All right, so I'll go ahead and position this into the beak here. You can use the line edge to work around that shape. And then I'll go ahead, while the paint is still wet, I want a soft blend between the outline and the rest of the beak, so I'm gonna go ahead and work this in while the paint's still wet. So I'll come in with my little bit brush, and then I'll do a quick little twist here into the paint. So I'll twist it between my fingertips. Donna is here. <laughs> I see a hello. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, Donna. All right, quick little twist here into the paint. And hello everybody, there's a lot more people up there I can see, but I 
can't see everybody's name, so hello everybody. All right, so quick little twist. There's my fine point of black. And I wanna go ahead and do a little line right through the center. So that gray is still wet, so there's a little bit of a nice soft blend between those two. And then I'll go ahead and do the outline here. And I'm also using my little pinky to help stabilize my hand. Kind of acts like training wheels on a bike, helps keep it steady. So I'll take this all the way around. And then I also want to go ahead and do the eye while I'm here, because that's just going to extend right into this area. So a little bit of black in there. All right, so just fill that in. And let's see, that's it for that. Now let's go ahead and start working on all of our roses. All right, so we've got lots of really beautiful roses to work in, and we just need to work on the flat color first that goes underneath all of those shapes, so I'll be using my mama brush. And I really want to use some coral. So we've got just some basic orange that we'll pull into the mix with our pink. All right, so now, basically all coral is is red, white, and orange. Or if, you're using, uh, if you are using our kit, that would be uh, magenta and white and orange. So very beautiful mix on that. So that's going to be our base. So see how it's very, it adds in those beautiful peachy tones to it. So this is our beautiful coral color. And I like that because it's still very complementary to the other pink tones, but it's a little different. And this basic first step, uh, first step is just very, um, just focus on coverage. Don't worry about any pattern work just yet. So it, it'll look like just big lumpy circles to start with. I'm trying to think if I wanna do any with purple or lavender, and I think I do. So I'll work on that here in a second. I'm gonna do all the coral ones that I can. Lots of coral in here. I'm gonna be spontaneous with the lavender ones. All right, so again, one more. Again, this is orange, red, and white. That's how we make our coral. And then I want one up here. Nice, smooth coverage over the surface. And I'll start to make these look really different here in a second. Um, but for right now, we're just going to get that foundation down. And then I want some beautiful lavender. And then we have purple. There it is. All right, so violet is what they call it. I call it purple a lot, but it's actually what they, they call it violet in your paint mix. So mixed with white makes this beautiful lavender color. And I think I want to add just a little touch of that here. It's a little circle. So at first, again, roses just look like big lumpy circles, basically. And you can actually vary the size of these. You can make little tiny ones. It's almost like a crown of roses up here. Let's do one more really small one. Now we're going to have fun with pattern after this. And that'll come in over the top of those roses. We'll do a few more of these. And let's do one right here. All right, so now, believe it or not, I know it doesn't look like much. It looks like a bunch of crazy, lumpy circles, but that, this is actually a great foundation for our roses. So now we're going to come in with some white, and I need my little bit brush now, 
and just white paint. And I'm going to start to swirl on basically these little half circles of white. Or you can tell your brain it's a lot like making little like parentheses like that. So I'll take that all the way around. And you can see how they're already starting to look more and more like roses the more we do this. So this is a very fun, abstract, expressionistic way to do this. Again, just little tiny half circles. Keep working those on in a circular pattern all the way around that shape. That's where you get to the inside of the rose. Also do a little bit here around the outside too. And the other thing too is as you're doing it, I think it's really helpful to try to lay that brush more over to the side. Gives a nice sweeping stroke to it. There's a nice quality that happens there. And it does feel a little bit awkward, but it does give you a nice light hand. So a little bit of that awkwardness as you hold it actually works in your favor because you can actually have a little bit of wiggle to your hand on this. But it definitely helps a lot more that paint just kind of rests right on the surface. And this is definitely a time when we don't want a lot of perfection either. And we don't want it to all look, uh, we don't want every stroke to look too much the same. We, we definitely like that variety. It actually works in our favor. So just kind of keep randomly taking that around in those little tiny half circles. I'm going to do all of the coral ones first. And then I'll, just in case, I'm going to clean the brush before I come into the lavender. Because the mix of the orange with the purple does not, they don't play very well together. And it tends to become very muddy. And so I don't want to lose any of that vibrant, beautiful lavender shade. And I, I don't want it to become um, dulled by that coral color. So I make sure I clean my brush really well before I do that highlight over the top. Also, these are so much smaller. I want a smaller little bit brush. Hello there, Sandra. Welcome. <laughs> Hi there. So again, just little half circles. All right, very nice. Now, a smaller brush. Okay, let's do a tinier little bit. And then still doing white paint as the first layer. And I'll do this over the top of these little lavender roses. Same stroke, lots of repetition. Just little, like little half circles. Just take it all the way around. This is that first layer of abstract petals over the tops of these roses. And then we've got a few more up here. And just keep working it around in a circular pattern. And it kind of feels like little half circles. And you keep working it towards the inside until you basically just kind of run out of room. All right, that's the first layer. Oh, lucky, my mommy's on. Hello, mommy. <laughs> we're doing a beautiful flamingo today. All right, so now we're going to do the darkest. This is the second layer. So the basic rule is, this keeps it really simple in your brain. You do, we started off with white, which is the lightest color. Now we're going to come in with the darkest color. So here, I'm going to go ahead and use just pure red as my darkest color. My small little bit brush. And I'll just dip into the red. I'm going to make one 
little spot right in the center and then just kind of lift off with a light hand. And then I'm going to be a little bit more sparing with this second layer of shadow. But basically this is little shadows that come in and around the petals. So I'll bring in that little bit of red, but I don't want too much. This is a little bit more minimal than what I did with the white. So there's that little spot. I always start with a little spot in the center. And then that gives me that little, that's that little shadow that happens right in the center of the rose. In fact, sometimes you could almost just leave it just like that and just do that one little spot. But we'll do a few more, just tiny little accents of the darker, the darkest shade here. There it is, there's that little shadow. And then just a few little accents of that dark shadow coming in and around those little petals. It's kind of random. You definitely want to wiggle the brush a little bit as you do this. Perfection is not really your friend on this. You don't want to be too perfect. You definitely want to, this is when I think a shaky hand is almost your friend on this deal. Just provides that little act of nature that just, I don't know, just kind of comes in and does its own thing. See a lot of that. Got more of this little shadow. You can make this really textural too and leave a lot of that paint just really resting on top of the surface. And also remember that little shadow there, just kind of push and then drag off a little bit, lift off with a light hand. All right, and then I also stuck my finger into the sky. So hold on a minute. That happens a lot to everybody, so let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, come back in with a pretty big brush. And basically you just take your initial mix of whatever you were using. Hopefully you still got a little bit loaded up. I'm going to bring a little bit more white and just kind of lightly feather that back out. Get a little bit more of a dry brush here. Wipe off the excess. I kind of like a little bit of that dry brush that happens. All right, so. All right, so there we go. Ta-da! fixed. All right, so now we need to come back in and do our darkest shade of the purple that comes in. So the smallest brush. Now make sure it is not too, oh, I got a hair. That could cause me issues, maybe. Maybe not that far down there, but All right, I'm going to try to not let that bother me. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that drives me nuts. Okay, I'm going to ignore that and move on. Okay, so, because the, the brush head's actually fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and push into the purple. So there we go, and I'm going to make that little spot right in the center. Oh, that's a little bit, don't do that. Oops, see, that's a problem. Mayday, mayday. Okay, that's better. Okay, now, little spot right in the center. There's that little shadow, and then we'll do a few of these little dark shadows that come around to accentuate the petals. And the paint is still wet too with the white, so you're getting a nice little blend with that white paint too. Which is also really nice. A little bit of purple. All right, and a couple more up here. A little spot right in the center. There's that shadow, that little center shadow. And then a few of these little half circles. And same thing here. All right, beautiful. Lots of fun there. Uh, what medium? Yes, this is acrylic paint. And a lot of people at home use a 
very um, student grade. Usually, they're buying stuff like folk art, so I never, I never uh, recommend using water in the mix. If you do use our paint, though, um, it's actually a really heavy body paint. Looks like this. It's just acrylic paint, and sometimes you have to add a little bit of water to it too, as you spread it out, so it spreads a little bit more, with more fluidity to the process too. Yeah, just acrylic paint. I love it. It's very forgiving. Dries fast, and if you have little possibilities, as I call it, then you know you can correct and redo. And so, and plus, I'm kind of an impatient person when it comes to painting, so I like acrylic paint because it does set up and dry really well. All right, so let's talk about green because we've got lots of fun green things coming in. We'll be working with our little kiddos here a lot, so our little bit brush, little buddy brush. And let's go ahead and mix up some of that. I like to keep this just a bright spring green. So I've got my just bright green here, a little bit of white. I'll mix those two together. And then you can actually use the line edge of this brush to do your stems. So we can start with that. This also has a lot of white in the pigment, so it really helps it cover better too. Um, a lot of times people will try to use this bright green on its own and it's very translucent and they really struggle with it because they see a lot of uh, brush strokes in the paint. So, but just add a little bit of white to your green and that really helps out a lot. So I'm going to start with my little stems here. There's a little stem there. There's one more there. I'm going to do a few more. Be kind of random with it. Now we can do our little leaves. And I'll show you a way to use both styles of brushes. So this one has got the flat line edge here. This is Little Buddies. It's a little flat brush. So you can do little leaves here too just by using the line edge and kind of take that out to a point and then just kind of lightly fill that in. Or you can also use your little bit brush. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to a little bit. I know that. That hair is going to cause me issues. Can y'all see that? That's really gonna cause a problem. That's like one. That's not gonna work. Sometimes you have to get your scissor after some of those little strays, but this one is in really great shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my little twist here into the paint with the green and the white. See, I'm kind of twisting it between my fingertips. That helps load up the brush. And a little bit can go into a nice fine point, which is really nice. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do your leaves here. I'm gonna show you on a white plate so that it's much easier to see because sometimes with, with the, so much color happening in the background, it's hard to see the contrast. But there's a real simple childlike leaf that I love to do where it just looks like you make a parenthesis and then another parenthesis and then you just fill that in. Or you can do almost what looks like the letter V. And that's got a little bit of a fun flair to it, a little more style to it. And it looks a little bit more like natural life, but you can also do little fun stylized leaves like this. I usually like to put these in pairs at least so they look more like a leaf. Just all of a sudden, even just having that second one there really helps it pop more like a leaf. But that, that's a couple different easy ways to do little leaves. And then another fun way to do a leaf is to do like a little loop effect. This is really popular, trending a lot. But you can take your stem up, do a little loop on the end, and then just fill that in. And then take another stroke off in a diagonal stroke here, loop, and then go back to the center. And then here off to the side, loop, and then go back to the center. So you just keep looping that back and forth. But you can do long uh, stems of that with that really fun technique happening. 
All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and start to apply this more over the surface area in our little bouquet that our lovely flamingo is carrying around here. So I've got my little bit brush. And if you have a struggle, by the way, like I'm in the bottom of the canvas area, so it's becoming a little bit more challenging to get the positioning that I want. So always feel free to just turn your canvas as you go. Sometimes that helps get to an area with a better reach or angle. So you can definitely turn it. I want to make sure y'all can still see it. Okay. And I'll turn it back here in a minute, but this just gives you an idea of how you can reach some of these little areas easier. And then we'll turn it back to where y'all can see it better, the whole thing. All right, so that gives you an idea of how to do that. All right, just green and white still working here. Yay, thank you. <laughs> and hi, Leota. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Mom. <laughs> All right, just keep working these in. I'm gonna do one of those fun little loopy leaves too. And after you do a lot of these, you really start to become pretty fast with it, especially that little, those little strokes like that. I think where I want to do my little loopy leaf because I didn't I forgot about that leaf earlier and then I was as I was teaching the leaves I thought oh yeah I need to do my little loopy leaf hello Kathy <laughs> you can do really tiny leaves too All right, I'm going to do a loopy leaf, so I'm going to do more green in here. You can also pull in a different color if you want to darken it a little bit, so let's show you that too. I'm going to pull it to more of a teal color. So I've got my little bit brush again. This will really help it stand out over the top. So I'll do a nice little stem that will go all the way up. And then let's go ahead and loop that around. And then we'll go ahead and fill that in. And then let's do another little loop off to the side. And then one off to this side. And we'll just keep going, kind of at a diagonal on each side. All right, so that's fun. We have a different style there. Liking this darker shade of green so I can actually add little accents to everything I've already done, which is a fun thing to do too. You can have a little bit more depth here. You've got your lighter shade happening on the bottom and you can come back in with a little touch of that darker shade. And I'm just doing quick little strokes on there. Just right over the top. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Uh, let, oh, you know what? I forgot a little section here. Let's do this one too. I was looking a little light there and this match from everybody. Okay, so I like that. That's awesome. All right, so now let's do another style of flower over the top here. I want to use a little bit brush and then let's do some bright yellow for fun. 
and you can just lay this on right over the top. You can also do this with white too, so I'm going to have a little bit of a mix going on here. All right, so I've got my white and my bright yellow. Kind of push into both of those. Get a nice layer on one flat side of the brush. And then what you can do here is you can actually just turn the brush like this over to the side and just press. And as you do that, it makes a nice, fun little petal. So that's just a fun little style. And then in the center of that flower, then you can go ahead and do a little dot trick. Now make the center of the flower. So I'm going to come in with a bigger brush here. And let's just do a little black center. So I've got my Big Daddy brush here. I'm gonna dip right, or you can use Mama. I'll dip right into the black and press straight down. And see, there's my fun little flower. So that's another fun way to make a flower on there, a little different. All right, let's see. Um, there's also a fun way to kind of do that very same thing with some purple, but I'm gonna make it a different kind of flower. So I've got my violet. All right, so I've got some, my violet and some white. Let's go ahead and push into both of those. A little bit of both. And my little bit brush. And it's very similar to this technique here, but the flower will just be a little bit longer. But I'm doing that press against the canvas like this in a diagonal motion. So I'll press it out to both sides. And again, this is a mix of a little bit of that violet and the, just a teeny amount of white, still pretty heavy with just the violet. And I'll keep going down, a little diagonal motion. See, and that's just a totally different kind of flower there. And if you want, you can add a little touch of like a third color in the mix to really make it just a whole other layer of beautiful accent happening. So let's do a little bit of some magenta. And I just want to barely touch there in the center. Again, just kind of right there on the side of the brush. And you can even come in with a little bit of white right over the top. While it's still wet, you'll get a little bit of a soft blend. Alright, so just another fun little flower you can add in there. Just all kinds of fun things that you can do here. And you can do a few more of these, like maybe down to the side. Kind of trail it down with just one little dot at the very bottom there. And see, adding that little bit of white also is pretty helpful too. I'm going to use a really delicate hand and take that up to the top. Yay! Okay, so we got some fun different flower techniques that we can do. Let's see what else. Uh, let's do those fun clouds that we had in the first one. All right, so let's start with my mama brush and just some white paint. So mama and white paint, and we'll just kind of push in little circles. And then we'll feather it out in the center. And we'll do a few more of these. Let's have one kind of coming off the side of the canvas. And 
let's do another one over here. And then we're going to do a really fun accent with these clouds. This is one of my most favorite techniques to do with the clouds. So we're going to finish up with our white and just push that all the way in towards the center. I'm going to lightly feather this out, a little bit more white paint, do a thick coat over the top here. Nice thick layer of white. Just kind of feather that back and forth. This is a little bit thinner, but I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just a nice thick layer of white right over the top. You can just leave these pure white if you want, but I am also going to show you another technique here in a second. But first I want to get that nice thick layer of white. That's going to work in our favor here in a second. Alright, so the accent that comes in will be using the Little Bit Brush. And you can do like a little bit of some purple. Light purple here. Kind of switch that around. Now it's still a little bit too contrasty. I'm going to softly blend this here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do that little bit of purple. All right, and then over the top, then I'll feather this back with a little bit more of that white. So I've got my mama brush, my white paint, and then I'm gonna just gently overlap, just slightly over a little bit of that purple. So it kind of brings in a soft blend into the center. So it does just slightly go over the top of what we just did, and it just blends that white into it. So nice soft blend. Cause see, this is a little bit too garish over the top here like this. So again, light, soft blend, just right over the top. Still leaves a little bit of that vibrant purple in there, but it softly blends it into the rest. And then you can do a quick wipe with your brush and then kind of lightly feather this back out into the center too. Just bring in more white. And then we can do another accent color. I always like to bring in a different color too. So I'm going to take another little bit brush here and maybe a little bit of gold. Or pink is also another fun color, but with that I can just do a little bit of some red. And I'm gonna do a few with pink too, so you can see how pretty that is. But I've got my gold on there first, and then let's do a little bit of some red too, so you can see how pretty that is. So a little bit of red, kind of push that through. Now it is kind of weird at first, like you definitely have to come back in and blend this in a little bit. All right, so let's come back in with Mom again, pure white. And then let's just softly blend in a little bit over the top. And then come back in over this red. So it still leaves a little bit of that outside red. We need to softly blend all this too. So a slight overlap over the top. Slight overlap here. So see how it's leaving just a little bit of that bright, vibrant color just around the outside edge, and then it's doing a soft blend into the inside of the cloud. And this still isn't quite blended just how I want it, so I do take a little bit more white, and I lightly feather this back into the center with that little crisscross stroke. So it kind of looks like you make that little letter X over and over and over again. Do a soft blend here. All right, I gotta duck down so I can see because the reflective light gets me and I can't see. I see glare spots on here, so sometimes I think I've got it. All right, so really fun way to do some magical clouds in your sky. All right, so we've got that. And then, let's see, final optional step is to write a word on here. 
We love words because they make us feel good as we pass by. It gives us a little bit of hope and inspiration. So what I recommend here is if you're doing this at home, you should have lots of extra time to play. So let all of this set up and dry. And then what you want to do is use your pencil first. Definitely use your pencil to plan with words because they always, when you go to paint them, they always get so much bigger. And then this way you know that it fits into the space. Also gives you a chance to you know, check your spelling, get stuff like that. And so I'm going to go ahead and write my word right in through here. Now mine's still wet, but I've been doing this a while. So I can, I can kind of judge now if I'm going to make it or not. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and write my word here, love. All right, so there it is. The other fun thing you can do, too, is if it... If this is completely set up and dry, you can always come back in with a beautiful Sharpie or a paint pen, and that makes it so much easier on you. Really recommend that for beginners, especially when you're first starting out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my little bit brush, and then just the black paint, do a quick little spin here into that paint, and then I'm just going to follow my pencil lines. And this is a small brush, so you, you do have to load up the brush quite a bit. Do a little curve here. And I got my lovely letter E. Exciting. All right, I think that is our very last step. So we're pretty much done. All right, so just signing your masterpiece is the very last step here. Let's see if I'm, I'm gonna normally, you can sign right hand corner, left hand corner. Um, you know what, I can do either one, they're both dry. I'll just be traditional, I'll be tra Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little Sharpie. You can see how fast and easy it is. I'm gonna do it here at the bottom. Tipsy artist. All right, awesome, very cool. Yay! Okay, so we are done with our beautiful flamingo painting. So this is awesome. How about I put it in the shot, okay? <laughs> Way to go, me. Okay, so there we go. So there it is, it's absolutely beautiful. And we just wanna thank you again so very much for joining us today. And I will definitely be back with you painting on Tuesday. I think Monday we're not painting with you live, but painting with you almost every day the rest of the week for sure Tuesday at 12 noon. Um, all of our events are on our Facebook page. You can check it out there to see what we're doing. And then to get reminders and stuff, just click the buy ticket thing and they'll send you lovely little reminders for all that. And um, then of course all the kits that go with our paintings are online. We always keep all the recorded videos online forever, so you can always go back and watch them anytime you want and pause them, rewind them, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, and then templates, if you need templates or any of the tools, the paint, canvas, brushes, templates, all that stuff that go with this to make it super, super easy. We have both digital and cardstock version for you, so whatever works for you, you can go ahead and pick out all that beautiful stuff. But that's all for you at tipsyartist.com. But yeah. Yay! So again, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you again for sure on Tuesday, if not sooner, but for sure on Tuesday at 12 noon, we'll be painting again live. Y'all have a wonderful Father's Day, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Mwah.